Horvat breaking in. Deeks score. Right there. Oh, oh and he stopped by Zepto. He score. Brock Besser. And uh, we spend a lot of the show already talking about Brock Besser. So I'll just throw it to you. It's a real, it's the spinoff of our poll question. Can the Canucks legitimately leave him off the team right now at the start of the season? Uh, they'll tell you, yeah, they can, but they'll also tell you, I'm, I'm going to hold Jim Benning accountable here. Gentleman Jim told us there's room for two young players on this roster on opening night. And I think we all went, hmm, one could be Jake and one could be Besser. Uh, I think the interesting thing from my perspective is you can make an argument both ways. Uh, I understand that uh, you could send uh, Besser down to Utica to start the year. There could be injuries. He could come up and he could, you know, just catch fire and take off. The thing with me, what I'm watching yesterday, painfully watching yesterday afternoon <laughs> at the Raj, is the fact that Besser is playing in a game that's actually harder for a guy like that to play in. He played the better the, the, the talent he's playing with, the better he is. He's, I think the thing is, what people are losing sight of, he's not one-dimensional. He's got to release like there's no tomorrow. As much as I like the first goal yesterday, the second goal, below the hash marks, a flick of the wrist, and he catches the short side. There was about three inches of room there. I love that. But the thing is, his positioning, his ability to get to the net, his knowledge of the game. Bill Horvat was talking last week about when he was playing with him, even in the scrimmage, to purposely chip pucks toward the net because he knew Besser was going to be there. And he, was, he would know what to do once he got the puck. So I understand uh, all the angst. I can understand all the polls. Personally, I would be disappointed if he started the year in Utica. But I'm really hoping. I think he's done. I know it's still early in the preseason, but he just keeps showing me things. It's his complete game. He looks like an NHL player he should be playing here. And Kuz, I totally agree with you. I think when you when you look at the preseason and you watch some of the rookies out there, the th- I guess the word is polished. Brock Besser yes. looks like a polished hockey player. You look at some of the other guys, you know, you look at Ole Levy mm-hmm. or Jordan Subban or Goldobe and you're like, yeah, they do some things well and you can see there's talent there for sure. But they look like they could work on their games a little bit. I think that's the challenge with Brock Besser. What does he have to be gained to going down into the AHL? Yeah, and that's true. I mean, there was a little bit of a, kind of a Bo Horvat scenario here in the sense that when we saw Brock at the end of last year, and don't lose sight of those four goals in nine games, those games are against playoff teams, okay? They weren't cupcake games. He scored legitimate goals in legitimate games. And the question was, yeah, you know, Brock has a strong stride, but the first three, he kind of churns and he gets there. He's skating better than he was last spring. So that, to me, that was the only X factor. Can he get up to an NHL pace and maintain it? I think he can. The other stuff, the stuff he can't teach, it's there. The offensive stuff is there. His game awareness is there. And, and we were told this. I remember talking to Troy Stetcher last spring before Besser signed because they were teammates at North Dakota. And everything Stetcher said, he sounds like a prophet. He said he can play at this level. He listed all the things he could do, and he's done them. And this is a, taking that leap from college you know, to the show, which not every guy makes. He usually trips on himself. So here we are today. We're having the great Besser debate, and I think it's fantastic because um, I know from a personal perspective, you just love going to the rink and seeing where he, where he can, can take his game to. And from the populace's perspective, come on. I mean, this is a marketing bonanza. This isn't forcing a kid into your lineup hoping to sell tickets. This is some honest-to-goodness anticipation about a guy who should be a serious consideration for your top six mix. We're speaking with Ben Kuzma of the province, talking Vancouver Canucks. So let's talk about another young guy in the Canucks system, also a first-round draft pick, Ole Ulevi. Uh, the news has not been particularly positive in the last month. Uh, he had a tough time at the Young Stars tournament, especially in two games. And I would say he had a very tough game against the Golden Knights. How concerned should Canucks fans be about this kid who is still only 19 years old? I think the concern level is where, how, where and how is he going to develop? I agree with you. I mean, outside of that one little offensive foray early in the game yesterday afternoon when he kind of was up ice, I found his positioning, you know, it was horrific. It looked like a guy who thinks 
he can play at this level, but can't play at this level yet. And I, and then now the work has to start. This is the interesting thing. These, these are the things we're hearing. Where's the commitment to getting better day in, day out? And isn't it interesting that Sammy Salah was purposely brought to the development camp to start a relationship with Ole Ulevi and hopefully the Canucks loan him out to Turku of the Finnish Elite League. He's got Sammy there as an assistant coach. Then he plays for Finland at the World Junior, where Sammy is an assistant coach, and he has a full year with Sammy Salo. I mean, we all remember Sammy Salo. Pretty good defenseman. So that, that's what I'm hoping for. I, I think there's something amiss right now. I'm not sure how quick Yulevi is to grasp everything right now through camp and practices. He looks like, um, I mean, we've talked to him. He's extremely confident and, yeah, kind of cocky. And, and I think it would really, as I say, behoove the organization to get him in the right environment to develop this season. We're speaking to Ben Kuzma of the province. Ben, uh, great piece to, on Jordan Subban. Uh, we read it, I read it last night, I read it again this morning, because I wanted to kind of take it a step further. You were talking about Subban keeping a stiff upper lip, even though the Canucks mm-hmm. defense looks set. Jason and I were kind of kicking this around before the show. Does anyone have a really good grasp of what Subban is. And by that, I mean like a tangible asset, a guy that can play in the NHL. Because I think we're probably getting to a point now where if he isn't getting a look with the Canucks, there's one of two things. It's either A, he's not going to work in this organization, or B, they just don't see him, and a lot of people don't see him as an NHL caliber defenseman. What's your read on this? My read is um, I don't know if there's room for two small defensemen on one NHL roster. And to me, that's, that's always been my kind of curiosity, especially in the last year. You know, Troy Stetcher has proven he could be one of those guys that can play at this level and do all the things you need to do. I think, I think the organization needs to really do some thinking here because you're going to have a diminishing asset. People still think about Jordan Subban scoring 16 goals in the A last year and 10 on the power play and having a one-time slapper that's pretty good and popped a lot of water bottles uh, in the minor leagues. You've got a guy who eventually you, you might not get return on. And, and, and you know, you could kind of you could kind of see it in, in Subban's demeanor post-game yesterday when I was talking to him that, you know, he didn't want to go there. And there meaning you want out. It's more about, you know what, I'm still young. I'm still learning. You know, last year Willie Desjardins would say, yeah, you know, it's all about how, how, how much time you don't spend in your own zone, your positioning, your stick play. Going to watch Ryan Ellis play in Nashville in the playoffs last year, trying to, green all that stuff but at the end of the day at the end of the day it's Jordan Subban good shot defensive shortcomings and apparently it doesn't pass the puck very well at the NHL level because it wobbles when I heard that quote from Travis Green last week it was like another red flag up the pole I mean we're not talking about what Jordan Subban can do we keep talking about what he can't do and that's not just coming from us that's coming from the organization. Yeah, and I, I, that's the interesting part to me because it's like I think a lot of people for outside would take a look in and say, well, they've got this particular asset. There's a young defenseman, uh, 16 goals in the A, makes the AHL All-Star yeah. game. You know, looks like he's got some promise. And it's this fine balancing act with the parent club where it's the Canucks are like, you know, we do want to kind of keep him as a tantalizing asset for some people. And, yet, I mean, as you mentioned, Travis Green comes out and says the things that he does, and it might give people pause. And I just don't know. I'm not even sure the Canucks know exactly what they have with Jordan yeah, I don't, Subban. And right and I, I, think, I, think, I think you've hit the nail right on the head there. They, they don't know because they keep talking in circles about Jordan Subban. I'm of the mind that, you know, you would think eventually in the NHL, depending on a particular team, could he not be a third pairing guy who maybe plays limited minutes, but he's a power play specialist. I mean, he moves the puck extremely well and he can really wire it. I think some team would see that as an asset, maybe not here, but somewhere else. And, and I think the organization has to come to grips with this because the last thing you want to do, and I'll just, you know, Reemphasize what I said earlier. You don't want an asset to start dwindling, okay? Yep. You kind of had one of those special years in the A, and, and you want to make sure everybody knows about that. Or thinking, you know what, maybe he is, he is that guy. Maybe we can work him in somewhere, but I just find it hard to believe you can have two small defensemen on one NHL roster. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what transpires with Sue Ben. Uh, ben, thanks a lot for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, we'll have to make this a regular thing as we go further yes, down we'll the road. Work McCl- I think McClutch has somebody in a headlock right now. We're working on it. <laughs> thanks, Goose. Thanks, boys. Hey, thanks, Goose. Have a good one. Thank Kuzma from the province.